What's going on guys, the same 17 here and today I wanted to talk about the upcoming brand new PlayStation 4 exclusive Spider-Man video game that was just announced to us a couple days ago at the Sony press conference. Now before I start getting into all of the details and start giving you guys my thoughts on everything, I just want to say that there were a lot of video games that were revealed that night, but this one for me was easily the best. Another game that I was very impressed with was uh, the new God of War. I think that the new style of gameplay looked fantastic. But yeah, for me, um, Spider-Man stole the show and all it took was a one minute reveal trailer, which is very impressive. Now, first things first, the trailer starts off with quick shots of New York City and all I can say is that this is the best version of New York ever in a Spider-Man video game. It actually looks like a living, breathing environment with things happening all around and that's never really been the case with the uh, previous Spider-Man games. In the previous Spider-Man games, New York was simply there for us to swing around. This time I feel like there's going to be much more of an interactive aspect to the city because if you've, uh, if you've read the Spider-Man comics, you know that the city itself is like a character as well. It's not just there to be something in the background. For example, let's take a look at the screenshots from the previous Spider-Man video game, which was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. As you can see, the city is not very populated. There are barely any cars or people on the street, and overall it just feels like the city is there for the sake of being there. I mean, you might as well replace it with the Fallout 4 Wasteland because essentially both of them are dead. Now let's take a look at the city in the new game. As you can see just from the screenshot, it is already on another level. This city looks more alive simply because there are more civilians on the screen, more cars on the screen, better textures, better draw distance, better lighting, and overall more attention to detail. So just from our first ever look at the game, we can already see that this is going to be unlike any Spider-Man game before, and I am actually very much liking what I'm seeing here. Alright, next thing we see in the trailer is of course Spider-Man's new costume. Now I have to say I did not see this coming at all. When I first heard about the game I thought that this game was going to have the new Civil War costume. So when I first saw this giant new white spider on his chest I didn't really know what to say and I actually did think it was kind of weird because it was so different from what I had in my mind. Now once again being honest, after watching the trailer like 50 times I have to say that I am genuinely in love with this new costume. I think this new costume is a combination of many different Spider-Man costumes that we've had in the past, and I think that it's great that Insomniac is giving Spider-Man their own look. One of my favorite video game series of all time is the Batman Arkham series, and when you show me a picture of any of the Arkham Bat suits, I can instantly point at it and tell you, hey, that is Rocksteady's version of Batman. And I want people to feel the same way in the future about this game. Hey look, that's Insomniac's version of Spider-Man. I want these guys to make their own Spider-Man and I think the first step of doing that is giving him a unique design. And in my opinion, this new design is awesome. Now for the people who don't like this look at all, all I can say is that we've been able to change Spider-Man's costume in pretty much all of the previous games. And I don't think it will be any different here. I'm pretty sure that this game, just like the old ones, will give you the option to change into costume from the comics or the live action movies so don't worry about that I am pretty damn sure that you actually will be able to change your costume um, once you beat the game or once you unlock costumes however uh, the system works in this game next thing we can talk about is the gameplay but you know what guys I'm gonna leave the gameplay out for now simply because I want to make a video dedicated specifically for the gameplay after and right now I just want to focus more on the trailer so the next time I do one of these let's talk spider-man videos it will be about the gameplay and the fighting system so yeah, for now I'm going to skip over it, but I will say this just for the people who are wondering. I think the gameplay looks amazing. This game might just have the best gameplay ever to date in a Spider-Man game, and just thinking about that makes me lose my mind. Anyways, back to the trailer. If you pause during the clip where Spider-Man is swinging, you can see a billboard that says Osborn for Mayor, and that might give us a clue at what the story is about or how Norman Osborn is involved in it. Now we all know that Norman Osborn is important because he's the Green Goblin, but in past Spider-Man movies and games, um, the character of Norman Osborn, not Green Goblin, but just Norman Osborn, has never really had a powerful position like this. So maybe in this game, Norman hasn't even become the Goblin yet, and he's using his power as mayor to make Spider-Man look bad and basically trying to take him down. You have to remember that this game isn't tied in with any of the movies. It's officially been confirmed that this is a completely new and original story written from the ground up. 
so Insomniac is going to try and make their own versions of these characters, so please do not be surprised if you get to see a completely new look and take on the character of Norman Osborn or even Harry Osborn. Moving on, let's take a look at the types of enemies that Spider-Man is fighting. One thing they all have in common is the fact that they are wearing these black, demonic looking masks. Now if you keep up to date with Spider-Man comics or read Spider-Man comics, you know that there is a character called Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative, for those of you who don't know, is basically this Chinese crime boss or crime lord, whatever you want to call him. And in the comics, he's shown to take control of different parts of the city by gaining control of the criminal underworld. But what makes Mr. Negative special is the fact that he he actually has powers. First of all, he's superhuman, so he actually can compete with Spider-Man in a fight. And on top of that, in the Marvel 616 universe, there's something called the Dark Force. And the Dark Force is basically negative energy. And this negative energy is obviously something that Mr. Negative can control. And with this, he is able to do things such as heal himself, he's able to shapeshift, he's able to make himself more durable, and he's also able to control people's minds just by touching them. So already that makes him an interesting and unique villain for this Spider-Man video game. Now, as I said, Mr. Negative has control over the gangs, right? So he is constantly, you know, sending out his men to kill Spider-Man. Now, what's interesting is the fact that he calls his gang the Inner Demons. And if you look at the Inner Demons in the comic books, you'll notice that they wear the exact same masks like the ones we see in this trailer. So that pretty much confirms the fact that these people that Spider-Man is fighting in this trailer belong to the Inner Demons gang, and that in some way, Mr. Negative will actually be involved in the game. Could he be the main villain of the game, it's definitely possible, but I'm going to say that he's going to be one of the many villains in this game. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is something called Feast. If you look at the clip in the trailer where there are a bunch of cop cars driving, you'll notice in the background there's a building that says Feast. Now for those of you who don't know, in the comics, FEAST actually stands for Food, Emergency, Aid, Shelter and Training. Now this FEAST project is basically a charity type thing to help and support the underprivileged people, the poor people and the homeless people of the city. Now here's where the things get interesting. This project was actually started by a man named Martin Lee. And Martin Lee is actually Mr. Negative. And behind the scenes, this place is nothing more than a cover-up and a base of operations for Mr. Negative's criminal empire. This is where everything is planned out, this is where the inner demons operate, and this definitely once again confirms that Mr. Negative will somehow be involved in this game. And for now, that's all I can say. I'm definitely looking forward to this game. Let me know if you want more videos like this one, where I cover updates and new information about the game, because truthfully guys, as I said before, this is easily my most anticipated game, and I would be more than happy to make videos like this one, basically covering the game until it comes out. So if that's what you want, please let me know down below. Also, let me know what you think about everything I talked about in this video, and all I can say guys is let the hype begin. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys later.